he calls the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. pray this morning. Father, we just want to lift you up, lift your name up, Jesus. God, we do, God, right now we proclaim it. We have victory in you, Jesus. God, if there's anything we have, we have victory, not by my own, but by you, by who you are, Lord Jesus. Father, we lift up the Willett family this morning. Uh, As TC has passed on, Lord, Jesus, we pray, Lord, your spirit would rest on that family, Lord Jesus, and revelation would be brought forth in these, in these moments, Lord, that those in our congregation will love on that family, I know. Um, Lord, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we, we thank you that you overcome, Lord. Uh, those, those that have a prayer request this morning, you can call it out. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, yes, Lord. Right now, Lord, we just take every one of these names, Lord, and we just bring them to you. God, in your your courtroom, your throne room, I thank you that we've got an advocate. Jesus, thank you that we can bring every name to you. And right now, God, we bring every one of them to you, Lord. God, and we right now, their sins are forgiven. They're washed. They're put at the bottom of the sea. God, and we speak right now that your Holy Ghost would just encounter them. There would be a laborer even go forth right now to, to every one of these names, Jesus. God, and, and we, God, we'll put, we'll put uh, work to this faith. Lord, if they come across my path, any one of these, Jesus, and I pray that they do, God, we will begin to work for you. We'll proclaim your gospel. God, we'll sow the un- incorruptible seed. And Jesus, we lift up your name, the name above every name. And we lift up right now uh, unspoken uh, uh, prayer requests this morning. If anybody has those, Lord, God, family members, children, uh, loved ones, friends. Jesus, you are taking care of all of them, Lord. God, you said to be anxious in nothing but pray about everything, Lord. And we do. We just, we lay them down. God, and and give you, God, right now, I just speak peace over everybody here today, Lord, as you, your Holy Ghost is ministering. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Victory in Jesus. That's what we have. Amen. (laughs) Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to welcome the visitors, anybody that's here. 
uh, visiting. We want to welcome you. Just thank, thankful for everyone that's here today. Lord, I know there's some that have come before and haven't been in a while. I'm glad that you're back. Uh, just, just thankful. I, I'm just thankful. Man. Uh, you know, it is, uh, it's Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> Pentecost Sunday. You know, I'm telling you, let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow on through. Who brought you running shoes? Cowboys run from bulls all the time in boots. I think we can do it. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, Announcements-wise, we don't have a whole lot. Nothing's really changed. We've got VBS coming up. We've got a few things. We, you know, volunteers, uh, you know, nursery workers, all those type of good things. Uh, you know, prayer for the youth group and their, their, uh, their camp coming up this summer. Uh, just a lot going on with that. Uh, just being prayer in general for the leadership of this church and, and, and so that we can move forward in the direction of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I think today we will have uh, children's church. Last Sunday we did not, so today we will be having children's church. Uh, by way of announcements, I think that's all that we have. Uh, you know, I've got a scripture, though, that I want to, uh, to, to talk about. Yes, sir, we are. Yes, sir, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, John 10.10, 10. can you get that up for me, brother? John 10.10. 10. So this is, uh, you know, we quote it all over the place. I'm going to quote it over our finances today. Uh, man, I really wanted to go to Malachi 3 and, and talk to you all about that and just tell you, you know, how, how we, never mind, Lord help me. But we, he told me to go to John 10.10, 10, so I'm going to honor God right <laughs> The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And you could carry that into everywhere, okay? You, you could carry that into anything. He wants to steal. He wants to kill. He wants to destroy. It doesn't matter what it is. He wants to steal your finances. He wants to kill your finances. He wants to destroy your finances. And I'm telling you that if you don't stand in, okay, Brother Richie this morning talked about covenant, Okay, in Psalms, in, in there's two scriptures specifically that he says, he says he'll, he upholds his covenant, he'll, he'll, he will uphold the word that he speaks. He will, his, his word is covenant. It says that he, he could not swear by any greater, so he swore by himself. <laughs> so you can take this word as covenant for you which means it can't be broken and if you stand on it, then he'll uphold to his end. Okay. He says, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So if you think of finances and it kind of takes the breath out of you <laughs> or it takes the, the, you know, the life out of you, it depletes you when you start to think about like, man, you know, my family's never really been, you know, technically blessed uh, you know, financially. I've always kind of been, it's been a little bit of a burden on us. You know, and, and you feel that, and it's a real thing. It's a real thing. We all have to work through it, you know, because we're raised, and everybody's raised just a little bit differently. Finances, you relate to it just a little bit differently. But you can take this one scripture and apply it to your finances, and God can show you something here. He says, I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So you take that and apply it to your life and finances. Are you living a more abundant life by the way of finances? And if you aren't, understand where you stand and then move forward. Begin to claim what God has spoken over you. Begin to claim that. Begin to understand that it is His will that you have life more abundant. More abundant. More abundant. So this isn't, uh, you know, just a a shout me down type message, but it is something that you have to you have to do every day. You have to take this word, apply it to your life, water it and grow it, and eventually it'll become a, a big tree. One day you'll you'll begin to understand that because you stood on this scripture, you'll be blessed. So uh, this morning we're going to do our uh, yes sir. We're going to do our our normal tithes and offerings uh, at first, and then uh, how exactly did you want to do that, brother? There's one there. Okay. So I had mentioned three weeks ago that we would do an offering, one, uh, just our normal, and then, or a tithe, and then your offerings second, 
to the youth and to the youth camp because in times past we've gathered materials, people have given food, they have bought things and brought them. This year we're going to do it different. We're going to give you an opportunity to give twice, okay? And uh, for those that are uh, in a religious mindset, if it really, really irks you, man, God may ask us to give three times today, so y'all be careful. Y'all be careful. And if you really want to get delivered, we might do it four. I'm telling you, when you get delivered, I mean, man, then it won't matter. You'll just give all the time. You, uh, it's something. It's something. God, and, and I mean it. God wants to, you to live more abundantly. I mean, uh, you can't, and I mean, it is law. It is law. Covenant. Law. That's another word for covenant. Law. It is law. God, you will not. You cannot, you, sh you will not be able to outgive God. And, 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 and somebody, you know, I, I know it, I know it. It just gets on that religious, it, it, man, it, it, it irks some people. But anyways, let's, let's give this morning. Father, we bless this tithe, this offering in the name of Jesus. And what is sown will reap back what you declare on it by your word and by your law. And, Lord, we pray right now, God, the same peace that we were, we were experiencing before as we write uh, checks, as we give, Lord Jesus, it will uh, uh, be accompanied by your Holy Ghost to go out and give, uh, go out and do what you purpose in it, Lord Jesus. And, God, we reverence right now, God, the minute that you poured out the Holy Ghost on this place, on this earth, Jesus, that we don't, we don't, uh, Lord, we don't wait for it. It's in us. And Jesus, we thank you for that. Jesus, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Yeah, so the first offering is going to be tithes. The second, you can just, when you leave, get uh, there's a baskets in the uh, back. One's in a chair here, one's in the foyer, and you can place that one for the youth in those as you leave today. You'd remain standing for just a moment. VR is going to come up and lead us in the pledge to the flag. Uh, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we just we, we definitely want to recognize that. The flag's right over here.
Just a moment, if you would remain standing. Uh, Memorial Day is about those that lost their lives, and I wanted to uh, just thank God for them because we have our freedom today because God has honored this country. In the Revolutionary War, there were 4,435. The War of 1812, 2,260. The Indian Wars, 1,000. The Mexican War, 13,000. In the Civil War, 498,000. In the Spanish War, there were 2,000. Persian Gulf War, 1,500. I'm having trouble here with this. Uh... The Vietnam War, 90,220. In the Korean War, 54,246. Persian Gulf War, 1,565. And on the global war on terror, at least 6,852. World War I was 116,516. World War II was 405,399. God, we thank you today for people that believe and who have fought for our country. Amen. If you're a veteran or a uh, police officer or a firefighter, would everybody else uh, be seated and let them stand for a moment? And let's just give them a hand. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's your old pal Dave back here in the, in, the, in the drummer's bubble again, my favorite spot to be on this stage. And uh, we are, uh, we got a lot of great stuff planned for you today, and I, I'm glad we mentioned all of that about Memorial Day, because obviously that is coming up. And uh, I didn't keep count of all of those people who died in these wars that have given us the freedoms that we have here today. And thank you, Lord, to be living in this free country. Amen. And um, so I didn't keep up with all of those, but it took a lot just for us to be living here on earth, right? But it only took one for us to be able to live for the rest of our lives in eternity in heaven. Amen. He went to the enemy's camp and he took back what he stole from him. Amen. Stand with us this morning. We're going we're gonna to have some fun. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And, uh, ooh, here we go. Here we go. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Yeah. I took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. You know he's under my feet. 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 His son is under my feet. Well, I went. Well, I went. To the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. You know I took back what he stole from me. Oh, you know I took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Don't you know he's under my feet? He's under my feet. 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 Satan is under my feet. Look what the Lord, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me up just in time. Yeah, I'm gonna praise His name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the 
Lord has done. When I went to the enemy's camp, when I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Yes, I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. When I went to the enemy's camp, and I He's under my feet. Yeah, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Look what the Lord, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me, oh, just in time. I'm gonna praise His name. He said He's just the same. Uh, uh, uh. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Here we go. Look what the Lord has done. You. We magnify your sweet, precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, we love you. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me. How he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise How he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed Think 
about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me and turn me around how we place my feet thank you lord on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all of the glory, and all of the honor, and all of the praise, it makes me this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we love you, you deserve the glory. Oh! 
great, amen? Oh, yeah. Man, he is great. Yes, God. Greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Thankful that we as a church this morning are recognized those who serve in our country, the military, and Our safety and police force, sheriff's departments, yes. uh, so on and so forth. Um, I was very thankful to have my oldest son, Caleb, with us here today. He's in the Air Force. Thank you. His family and my nephew here, it's on the police force and sheriff's department. Thankful for those of you who have served or still serving around the building. I know, know most of you. We're very thankful today. I'm not traditional in that. I'm not preaching on Memorial Day, so I want to just take a minute and just say that. Thank you. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People's service should be honored. Hallelujah. And really, every person that serves somebody else should be honored. That's right. Hallelujah. It's why we do things like Mother's Day and Father's Day, really the only part of it to me that makes a lot of sense. It's the fact that when you have a, a parent that gives of themselves freely for your well-being and for your raising and for your provision, they ought to be honored at some point. Amen? That's right. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I ain't preaching on that. That's good stuff. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you this morning. We give you honor and glory that we could come into a house Father God of worship. Yes, God. Father, we, we do, just as your word says, we rejoice when they said, let us go to the house of the Amen. Lord. Father, I rejoice when I come see my brothers yes, and God. sisters. Father God, they uplift me. They encourage yes, me. Father God, I feel their love, their friendship. Father God, there's nowhere else I'd rather be this morning. And that's a true statement. Father, I enjoy being in your house with your people. Father, we just thank you that we could come this morning in a, in a, in a country that's free. Yes. Father God, so it is an honor. We don't pass it off as just another traditional thing. Father, we are thankful, Father God, and we do give memory. We do, do give thought. We do give thanks and honor today to all those who have sacrificed, yes. Father God, their lives for the benefit of others. Yes. Father, it's so much in your nature and so much like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who sacrificed everything. And we're so thankful today. So we honor him, the Lord Jesus, the King of Kings. Yes, God. We bless you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. 
I don't know, I battled this morning on about 10 different subjects uh, or, or sermons, you know, just things. Uh, they certainly wasn't developed sermons. They were just thoughts. I said, Father, you want me to preach about that? Father, you want me to preach about that? And uh, I can't say I'm still 100% settled. So we're going to see what he wants to say. Hallelujah. Yes, God. So here's what we're going to do is, I'd started writing a uh, book, I guess, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to share. I'm going to share some of it, but it's going to be my message this morning. Uh, the Lord continued to direct, but I'm going to I'm going to title it. This probably ain't the best title, but I'm going to call it in the name. Yes. You know, it's in the name. When a person is born, uh, the first thing that happens to a child is they're given a name. And uh, sometimes families are prepared. They know what they want to name that child. Some people are so prepared they have the name before they ever have a child. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Then there are those, they're not so prepared. Now this is just for joke. This is just moping and joke. Y'all with me? This is just joke right here, so don't get too serious right here. I did know a lady who was a nurse for over 40 years, like at Cabrini Hospital. She worked in the NICU or whatever. And she told us one night, my friend Buddy Kirtland is his mother, and she told us we were just sitting around laughing about other things, so she had something funny. She said, I remember the day going into a lady's room, bringing the child, the baby. She gets to hold it first time, you know, after, you know, the delivery room. And she said, ma'am, this is just such a beautiful child. She said, what are you going to name it? She said, oh, somebody's already named my baby. She said, somebody else named your baby? She said, it's right there on her arm by Mally Jones. <laughs> Female Jones. <laughs> for Mally. So, that's a true story. That's a true story. I've even got two, almost as funny, two boys went to, I hope they don't see this video, they went to St. Mary's uh, in Natchitoches. And a friend of mine, Donna, taught them, and her son, Blake, played ball with them. One of them's name was Arangelo, which was orange jello. The other one was Lamangelo, and that's lemon jello. <laughs> and that's true. I hope you ain't sitting here today and saying, well, my name's... <laughs> Bless your heart. So often names are, are selected because of trends in society. So we know that there are trends. You know, people get on certain names, and then all of a sudden... Half the baby's born, you know, in a particular hospital, all the girls are named that same thing. You know, we, we've gone through, I won't start naming them all, but, you know, there's been the Lisas. I've probably known 5,000 Lisas in my life, and, you know, it goes on and on, Tammy's and, you know, whatever. And look at mine, Randy. I bet we got 10 Randys in this church. And uh, so you're given a name. Sometimes we don't realize the power of the name. And I'm just starting here. This really ain't my message. It's just something to start with. Proverbs 22, 1 says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name is the most valuable thing probably that a person almost will ever have. And in our uh, church, in our beliefs, we believe Mark 11 we believe that we have what we say. We believe that there's power in the tongue. We believe that there is power to both bless and curse. We believe there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Therefore, what somebody calls you all the day of your life, you're bound to become that. Some people wonder why some of the trouble they have in life but every day your family's calling you death, broken, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your name might be. 
We say a parent should never say this to a child. You're stupid. Well, unknowingly, you might have been being called stupid all your life if you don't know what your name means. That's good. Um, I have seen kids live out the name of their lives, and I'm not going to start quoting those. I'm going to give you one for instance in the Bible. Mary. Mary. Y'all know some Marys? First church I pastored, we had a Mary. Thank you, Jesus. For Mary. <laughs> Here's a characteristic of Mary. It comes from the root word Mara, which is bitter waters. So what we find out about Marys more often than not, they're a little edgy. They can, they can be very opinionated or stubborn. Well, you're calling them that every day. Why did, G, why did God, not Jesus, why did God select Mary to be the mother of Jesus? Not because she was so godly. The characteristics in her was a young woman determined enough to carry a child when it would be not accepted in the community. That's good. That's good. Mary's determined, I'm having this baby. Y'all know a Mary? Hallelujah. Thank you for Mary's. <laughs> you become like what you called. Amen? Y'all with me? All right. Hallelujah. A good, a good name is to be selected. See, my name, Randy, one of the meanings of it is if you go to the Christian bookstore, you find them cute little bookmarks. My name means shield or protector. I've been that all my life. I don't know how to be anything else. That also means I can be defensive. It's got positives and negatives. You have to figure yourself out. But when I was a kid, little kid at school, and somebody else is getting picked on, I might have been two foot tall, but you're getting off of them. It don't matter boy or girl, black, white, red, green, child in, you know, in the special education, you better not mess with them. It's what I was called all my life. Shield. Shield. Guardian, protector. I'm still being called that every day. So that's just a nugget. That ain't really my message this morning. But it's a way to start. So there's power in the name. Power in the name. Isn't it funny before Jesus came, we don't use this word at all, but it said when the Son of God come, he said he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. Well, it's what he was. Nobody walks around today saying, calling him Emmanuel. Y'all with me? But he was. They didn't call him Emmanuel probably because they didn't realize he was. So they kept calling him Yahshua, Jesus. Some called him the son of Joseph. But in their day and time, they didn't have as many names as we have now. They wasn't as creative as Lemon Jello <laughs> or from Alley. So they would often identify a person by where they were from. So he was Jesus of Nazareth. He was that Jesus. Y'all with me? Yep. All right. It's all in the name. Hallelujah. Well, I gave you a nugget you can look at this week. Look at your name. Try to find it and figure out. And you might see some characteristics of yourself. And you might want to change your name. <laughs> some people do it, but you keep changing the last one. <laughs> That's a joke, too. You can laugh. <laughs> I thought things get better and I changed that last name. Well, it might be the first one that's hurting you so bad. <laughs> All right, I'm meddling now, Pastor. <laughs> Uh, it's fun though. I'm enjoying it. Hallelujah. God was so much into names 
that I learned this years ago that, that it was in Cushing, Oklahoma where the Lord spoke to me one night in prayer and he said, I'm up here trying to mind my own business. The Lord spoke to me. I'm minding my own business. The Lord's trying to talk to me. And uh, that's a joke too. Y'all go ahead. So I'm praying and the Father said, I want you to change the name of this church. Oh my Lord, have mercy. I literally sat back on my legs like this. I ain't praying like this no more. Richie, I'm just sitting back going, Lord, come on. I'm like a child. Come on. You know, that's the last thing. Why me? He just let me, you know. Nobody saw me doing it. Place I had people in there praying, but I was just, you know, to myself. I was just like, come on, Lord. Really? Now I thought, Randy, you miss God, dude. Go back to praying. Went back to praying. The Lord said, I told you to change the name of this church. <sighs> There's got to be a scripture. There's got to be some word on this. I said, then, Father, you give me the word. Right? In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Father, give me the word. He said, I will. He said, do you even know why I changed the names? I said, not really. He said, because when I changed the name, I changed the purpose. I said, oh. He said, did I not change the name of Abraham from Abram to Abraham? I said, yes, sir, you did. He said, because he went from a man serving me that said he would follow me. And I said, now I will make you a father of many nations. Oh, he had no child. He said, did I not change Sarai's name to Sarah? I said, yes, you did, Lord. He said, because her purpose changed when her husband got in alignment Praise with me. God. He said, did I not change Jacob's name to Israel? I said, yes, Lord, you did. He said, because when he went from simply being Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob, Isaac's son, he said, he began to walk in his fulfillment oh, of my God. destiny. He said, out of the God. nation will come you, I, oh, will God. come Israel, that I promised your grandfather. Oh, he said, but it will come out of you. I have changed your destiny. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Then I knew a New Testament guy that was killing the church, and he got knocked off of his donkey, oh, yeah. and his name was Saul, oh, and God yeah. said, from this day forward, you'll be Paul. Yeah. And God changed his destiny. All in a name. Oh, yes, God. They would want to clarify it before you go preach places. They'd say, now I just want you to know this, Paul. That was Saul. I just want y'all to know. Heads up, you know what yeah. I mean? They did. They said, but you can receive him. This brother's changed. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said, Father, what do you want me to change this name? They got like Living Word Church on the sign. He said, I want to be Church of the Harvest. Oh, God. It's harvest time. All right. Anyway, that's just a little side story. But the truth of the word is true. God changes names when he changes destinies. Why? Because there's power in the name. Yes, God. There's power in the name. I just want to share this with you. I won't be able to go through all my, my book I'm writing. You know what I mean? Everything I got up here, all these pages. But here's what I want to tell you is, is that in the name is the identity. I said in the name is the identity. Your name is what you identify with. That's why when they began to call us, uh, you know, believers, Christians, they were identifying people with Christ, Jesus. That's good. So they weren't identifying with any other God. And the Greeks had thousands of gods is why I said that word like that. Because that's what go was going on majorly in that day and it's still happening today. We just don't talk about it. We don't see it as prevalent. But they were identifying with the one who hung on that cross for you and I, the Lord Jesus Christ. They were Christians. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Something about that name. Something about that name. Yes, That's why we shouldn't use the Lord's name in vain. That's not just a cuss word. In vain, the word vanity is really something that's worthless. Vanity, it's all vanity. It's vain. It's worthless. It's refuse. You can throw it out. It's unimportant. 
So we don't use the Lord's name like he's not important. We don't use the Lord's name. Churches do it all the time. They use his name in a sentence to try to prove what he can't do. That's the worst cursing you could ever do is the almighty God who all things are possible and you say he can't. Yes, he can. But you got to believe in the name. Yes. Woo. You got to believe in the name. Oh, yes, God. It's not your name. It's his name. Oh, yes, God. That's where people get off. Like you could do something great in your name. Hmm. There is no other name under heaven by which men must be saved. Jesus. One name. Yes, God. One name. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, One name, Jesus. I want to tell you about that name for a minute. If y'all could pull up for me Philippians 2. I'm going to start in verse 5. I like how the Holy Ghost is taking this this morning. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. He said, put this kind of mind on you. Yes. Right here. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Next verse. Listen to this. But made himself of no reputation. Right. right there he's telling you God don't care about your name. He wants to make sure you know his name. Oh, yeah. When I wake up in the morning the devil screams because I'm up because they know my name. I hope I don't care if they know my name. I want them to know I know his name. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Peter I know. Paul I know. Jesus I know. But who are you? I don't care if they know my name. But I do want the world to know his name. Oh, yes, God. But he made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death oh, yeah, on that God. cross. Wherefore, because of that, yes, God. God has highly exalted him and yes, given him a name yes, which is above every yes, name. Yes, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow yes, and things in heaven, oh, yes. things in the earth, and things under the earth. Oh, yes. And that every tongue should confess one name. Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes, God. One name. One name by which men must be saved. Yes, God. One name. All who call on the name of the Lord yes, shall be saved. Yes, There's one name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! One name. Yes, God. There ain't ten names. There ain't twenty prayers. You can't pray good enough. But you can say, Jesus. You can say, Jesus. And at that name, every knee will bow. And every tongue confess. He is the Lord. It ain't two names. It ain't confusing. It's only one name. It's only one name. What did we get from that name? Brother Taylor, I'm sorry. I'm going to wear you out in a little bit. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. What did we get in that name? I told you where you get salvation. If you call on that name, you'll be saved. Yes, God. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Yes. Amen. They shall cast out devils and they'll speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, that's demons. They'll take hold of evil spirits. And if they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It's in that name. Yes, God. Problem with so many people is that we want to do things, Brother Terry, in our name. That's right. We want the glory. We want the credit. We think we can do something. It's only in his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
It is a name above every name. Hallelujah. How about going to, uh, over to Luke chapter 10, verse 17? And the 70 returned again unto him. Because if you go back in chapter 9 and verse 10, he sent the, he sent the 70 out. And he said, well, go forth and heal the sick, raise the dead. He said, every home you're coming to, don't take a purse with you. Don't take your money. He said, they'll receive you and take care of you. If they don't, dust your feet and move on. That's what I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. They came back, and when they returned again with joy, they said, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Through your name. It's one name. <laughs> it's one name. Jesus. It ain't a hard name. <laughs> Yeshua. Jesus. One name. Hallelujah. It's a name above every name. Hallelujah. It's a name above every name. Woo. Hallelujah. What about John 14? Starting in verse 11. Let's look at this together. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also and greater than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Right. Verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, Amen. that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Oh, just stay right there, brother. Just leave that up. Let it burn into that screen. If you ask certain things according to my will and you hold your mouth right and you've been serving me for 40 years and you give a big enough offering, I will do what you ask. That is not what he said. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Must be something maybe about that name. Must be something about this name that's higher than any other name. Then are you getting that? It's a name that's above every other name. It's highly exalted. Oh, yeah. Church, get it in your mind. Oh, it's yeah. beyond what you ever dreamed. Oh, it's yeah. higher. Yeah. It's higher. Yeah. It's higher than any problem. It's higher than sickness yeah. and disease. It is higher than addiction. It is higher. Oh, yeah. My God, it's higher. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. We go pray for the sick in hospitals and stuff. All I know to say is, Jesus! Jesus! All who call on that name will be saved. Not who, those who pray five-hour prayers. Those who know that name and the power of the name. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Let's see what that says. I don't know. It might not say nothing. Oh, but it probably does. Hallelujah. Let's see what he says. Is he ready? Acts 3, 16. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him the perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That man that God healed in Acts 3 had faith in the name. Oh, yeah. He believed the name. That's right. <sighs> oh, Lord. I ain't, go, I ain't going there this morning, but let me give you a tidbit, something beautiful. If you went to Joshua, and we ain't going there, brother. If you went to Joshua, Moses is dead. They've been waiting 40 years going to the promised land. I can tell you, there was a walled city there, Jericho. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When they sent the spies out, and they came to Rahab the harlot. I'm going to preach that one day. I just, I'm getting the Holy Ghost on me talking about her. <sighs> Such a beautiful story. King sent word and said, I know that the men come unto you. And she said, no, they left. But she hit them. Here's the thing. That's the only one point I'm wanting to make. She said to these two, two men, she said this, 
They have a fortified city and a great army. She said this. We've heard the name of your God. We know what he has done on y'all's behalf, and we are terrified. The enemy cannot stand against that name. You don't know how afraid he is of you when you use that name. Hallelujah. I'm getting a workout. Hallelujah. Walking up and down them steps. Let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, Brother Ty, uh, if you would go for me to Matthew uh, chapter 28 and start in verse 19. There's been a big debate in the church for years. This is going to shift a little bit, and I'm trying to do this in a few minutes before I baptize two of my grandbaby. Uh, there's, there's been a big debate in Christendom and, you know, in, in churches about in the name. So it says, it says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We'll just stay right there for a minute. I I want to point out something to you about the word, the name, the phrase, in the name. The Holy Ghost will let me what I want to bring out to you. So the phrase in the name is actually a phrase in the Old Testament that is shem or shame. It's S-E-M. It's just three words, three letters. It's pronounced shame. And for us to really understand what he's talking about in this in the name, we have to look at it. So I want for over the next just few minutes, I want to kind of break this down for you. Um, shame, remember, this is the phrase in the name or in the name of. It's one word, shame, S-E-M in Hebrew. That word stands out in a definite and conspicuous, which means clear and visible position on behalf of someone or something else. Meaning that in the name means that someone is standing in a place or acting on behalf of another in a very clear manner. There's no confusion of who they're standing in the place of. So to give an illustration of this, we can go to Deuteronomy. And uh, so if we go to Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 18, verse 5, I want you to see this. uh, I want you to see this because it's a scripture we quote. uh, You know, people have quoted it, uh, some in church. Um, Look at this. It says, Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all that he commands you to do this day. Um, let me see. Yeah, 18.5, I'm sorry. Thank you. For the Lord thy God hath chosen him out of all the tribes to stand. Here's what he's talking about in context. He's talking about the priest. He's talking about the priest and how they were going to anoint them to minister before the Lord. Listen to what he said. For the Lord thy God hath chosen him out of all the tribes to stand to minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever. Referring to Aaron, right? When Aaron was to stand, he said he was, listen, listen with, with the meaning, for the Lord thy God has chosen him out of all the tribes to stand to minister on the behalf of, in place of the Lord, him and his sons forever. When he's speaking, he's taking God's place. Y'all with me? See, that's kind of what, where I'm wanting your mind to shift this morning because some of us believe that when we use the name that we're mystically calling on something in heaven and we're not getting the fact that you're standing in the place of Jesus just as if he was in the earth. 
You're a representative. That's why you're called an ambassador. Ambassadors do not speak on behalf of them, their own self ever. They speak on behalf of their government. That's right. And that's all they say. They do not make laws. They do not change contracts or covenants without the government's approval. They are simply the go-between between the government and whoever they're sent to. You're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Yes, God. You don't go on your own account. You don't go on your own accord. You go in the name of the Lord. Yes, God. It's in His name. It's a name above every name. I said it's a name above every name. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, God. That's why if I show up, God, Jesus shows up too. I pray and trust when you show up, He shows up too. Praise God. That's good. I probably believe that more about you than you do. Well, I don't believe I have to pray for everybody. I believe you can. That's right. Greater is he that is in you. In you. Yes, God. In you. Yes, God. Not just one or two or ten of us. In you. Thank Hallelujah. You. What about this then? What about this? What in the world? So, this in the name of. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1 through 5, it tells us that talking about our gospel, if it be hidden. I'm fixing to paraphrase some of this. So therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we faint not. He said, we've received mercy, we faint not. Um, let's see. Verse 2. We've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking, craftiness, handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourself to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That means I'm going to live right and do what the Word of God says because I could offend you or hurt you. Verse 3. But if this gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. If they can't see Jesus in you, our gospel's hid. I'll say it one more time. If they can't see Jesus in you, our gospel's hid. See, we have gone about saying a bunch of things with our mouth when Jesus, God wants us to be for the world to see Jesus in us, not That's hear right. all that we're saying. That's right. But if our gospel we hid, hid them our laws. Verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ shine unto them, it should shine unto them. All right, verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. He's telling you right there that you go in His name. That's right. You go in His name. And when you go in His name and the authority and the power of God shows up, then they see Jesus. Yes, God. Then they see Jesus. So here's what I want to go back and touch on because I got just too much to cover uh, by far. Um, I want to go back to Matthew 28, uh, verse 19, and I want to look at this for a moment. So it says, Go ye therefore in all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. So, so the word shame comes from a, a, a Hebrew word, a root word that is sum, S-U-M. It's a verb, it's an action word. So here's what that means. It means to set something or to put something in place, to ordain it, put it in the right order, to establish it. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you put these two words together, that God said in the name or in my name. He said, represent me, take my place, and set things in the proper order, establish what I desire to be established. So when you put the two words together, it means to stand on behalf of God in their place, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and set things in order, establish that which he desires to be established. Hallelujah. That's why he said... uh, That's why he said, you know, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm in the midst of them. I said, I said, if I join together with Pastor Lamar and he understands that he's in Christ, that he, Jesus, is living in him, and I understand he's living in me, then when me and him get together, how could he not be in the midst of us? He's already with us. So he knows he's standing on behalf of the king. I know I'm standing Praise on behalf God. of the king. So together we're a kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why if any two shall agree as touching anything in heaven, because they know in the name, 
They know the power of the name of Jesus. They Praise know God. the place they're standing in. Anything they ask, it'll be done. Thank you, Jesus. We think it's because of our great praying. I think I broke through today when I prayed. I think I did. You did. You did break through. You broke through your emotions and your, and your mindset, and you broke through a whole bunch of things, but you didn't break through with God. You, you, know, you, know, you did because you were able to receive from Him, but I'm saying God didn't move. You did. Something happened with you, not God. That's good, man. Amen. He's, he's constant. He's steady. He's faithful. He's able to be trusted. He doesn't change. He's not a man. He hasn't changed. He's always on. That's good. He's always on. Hallelujah. I was, this morning I got up, I wasn't having the best prayer I've ever had. It just seemed kind of dead. Yeah. It was just like nothing. I'm like, okay, I know you're with me. We can play this game. You know, I, I didn't really say it to him because I knew I was the problem. So when I, when I went to my little office and everything got in there, there's no reason to say, Father, where are you? What's happened? All you got to say is, Father, what's going on with me? Yes, God. Because it's me, oh Lord. Yes, God. You steady, dude. If he changed that much, if he was that fickle, wishy washy, weird, and strange, we'd never be able to serve him because we could never find him. He's easy to be found. Yes, God. Call on me and I'll answer you. Show you yes, great and mighty God. things which you know not. Yes, God. Oh, he's easy to be found. You're the one that gets messed up. That's good. So, let me get back on track here. So, Here's what I'm trying to tell y'all, and I'm going to paraphrase so I can end. When it goes to the New Testament, we go all the way back to the first instance, which that's why I went to Deuteronomy, Pastor. The reason I went to Deuteronomy was not because it was my select. as the first time that phrase was ever used in the Bible in my name, where the, where, the, where the priest that's would good. stand and speak that's on good. behalf of God in his place to establish God's ways in the earth. Now, Jesus said, in my name, Go ye forth, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. In my name. That's what he told the church. In my name. Then at the end in Matthew, he said, Go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. Baptizo. Baptizo. Baptizo is that word baptize. Um. Uh, Uh, there are different expressions of the word in Greek of baptize. So let me tell you like this. Instead of giving you the words and all that confusing stuff, let me tell you like this. So when I go up there to baptize a little while, there will be two. We are about to do a baptism. Y'all with me? That, that, that's the act of when you baptize them. Okay? So then I'm the baptizer. Y'all with me? The people getting baptized are the baptizees. All right? When we're completed and we're all thanking Jesus, we will have baptized, past tense, them. This word right here, baptizing, is the word baptismo, which means to immerse, to submerge, to encompass. So what he's saying here is, in the scripture we've battled for years, he's saying that I want you to go forth and submerge my people to engulf them, encompass them with the Father. That's good. In place of the Father, I want you to go and manifest the Father. That's what he's saying. And the word Father there is not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim. That word father right there is where we get the word parent. It is in the adult male parent, typically pater. It is parent. Listen to what he's saying. Then the word son is the word for the oldest son or offspring of the father. It's not Jesus. He is referencing himself. But he did not. Here's why he put it that way. The only one that has the same name is Holy Ghost. You won't find his name any different in the Bible. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, right? You won't, you won't find, you know, Spirit of the ages, of the grace of God, you know. He's, he, he's, so he, here's why. Here's why. He was telling them, you're going to have to go forward and stand in my behalf and let them know the love of the Father that I have received from him, oh, that I have given unto you. 
because I'm in the Father and He's in me and I'm in you and you're in Him. He said, you're going to have to go forth and baptize every nationality group with the love of God and with the love of the Father and where they can know Him as Abba. And that's what He's telling them. And then He says this, and the Son. So then there is a baptism of the Son, which you and I both know that is when you're born again. That is when you become in Christ. That is when we call get saved. That is what He's saying. They all through the Son, uh, uh, you know, will come into, you know, the kingdom and of the Holy Ghost. And so... And of the Holy Ghost means that uh, on behalf of the Holy Ghost, we know that there will be another baptism of the Holy Ghost. So you've been baptized with the love of God. It's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. It, it, is, it is you saturating them and they can't deny it. Every time you come around me, I just feel the love of God. I just feel the, the atmosphere change. You say that's God. And if you want to get into it, it's through the sun. And you can get into it through the sun. And once you're into it, you can be empowered and experience the fullness of God through the Holy Ghost. I need to baptize you into all these things what he was telling them, what he was saying. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right, Father, how we want to do it? Glory to God. We're going to end. Hallelujah. Baptizo. Hallelujah. When we get baptized in water, we know according to Romans chapter 6 that Paul said that we are dying to ourself. We are consecrated or we are crucified with him so that we can live afresh a new life. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me? So we do this as a representation, a submerging, representing when a person dies to their, their will. And that's what really happens in baptism. Because listen, I asked the Lord, I said, Father, how do I make this relevant? Here's what I got. Jesus can be your Savior. You never approach water. You believe on, on Him. You know what I mean? Y'all with me? Yes. I'll call on the name of the Lord will be what? Saved. 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 So you're brought into his, his family, his kingdom, his, his right, right standing with him. You're given his spirit. But what this really, this act up here of baptism is really, Paul said, it's us dying. It's a surrender of the will where he goes from being Savior to Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're saying, I want you to take full control of my life. I don't just want to be in the family. I don't want to just be saved. Yes, so to me, baptism, to me, I'm just saying to me, this guy, don't have to be to you, to me, that is not salvation at all. That is the second level of saying, I surrender fully for your will to be done. See, because I believe like Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your body a living sacrifice that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You die to yourself. And so to me, baptism is saying, I die, I bury myself, right? The water representing Praise dirt. God. And I bury, and, I, and Pastor Lamar always says, and we raise them to newness of life. Oh, yes. A resurrection of life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Yes, God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to do that. And then I want to say this with, this, with this message I just brought. Then... We will continue as a church to continue to baptize them in all these other things. One day they will be totally submerged, immersed in the Word of God. They'll understand it. See, some people don't, don't understand that baptism, seriously, because it don't use the Word. But in the Scriptures it says, that we are changed by the washing of the water of the word. That's, that is a baptism yeah. of word. I was going to get to that today on the baptism, uh, doctrine of baptisms, of the different baptisms in the word, but I'm just going to say that and leave that alone. 
But what I'm telling you today is we want to be a church. We believe in baptisms. We believe in a water baptism. This guy believes in a word baptism. This guy believes in a baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe there is a baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire. I believe there's a baptism even unto death. We won't talk about that one much. I don't even like it. I don't. Um, I'm going to touch on this before I go up there and baptize these, these, these babies. Here's the thing. When Jesus was standing before the, the mother with the two sons, they said, can one of my sons sit at your right hand and one at your left? And Jesus said, if you drink the cup I drink, or if you are baptized with the baptism on which I'm baptized. He said, can you do that? And they said, we can be baptized with your baptism. He said, okay, yes you can. But it's not my authority to tell you you can sit at my right hand. That's the Father's. Those dumb boys. Bless that mother's heart. Don't promote your child that hard. Because the baptism he was baptized in was death on a cross. He was immersed in doing the Father's will. I read that to you first, and that's why he has a name above every name. His baptism was unto death. His baptism was a baptism of blood that poured all over his body and immersed him for you and me. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He done water baptism. He was Holy Ghost baptized. He was word baptized. And he was blood baptized. He didn't miss a baptism. Hallelujah. So today you might be sitting here and you say, well, Brother Randy asked Jesus to be Lord of my life, but I've never really gotten into the Word. Well, you're going to struggle unless you immerse yourself in the Word of God and have your mind renewed. It's by the washing of the water of the Word. It's a baptism that is just as traumatic as this water baptism, maybe greater. Then there is the one where you say, I gave my life to Jesus, but I didn't know anything about this Holy Ghost. What's what they said in Acts? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? No, they hadn't, but they got filled with the Holy Ghost. And me as a little Nazarene boy served Jesus 10 years before I got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. I didn't even know there was was even a possibility for an infilling or a baptism in the Holy Spirit where he comes and immerses me in his presence. But it was. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm ready for that fourth one or if I even want it. We're going to leave that alone today. I don't know if I want that blood one. But we say things like this. Lord, I'd die for you. He goes, watch your mouth. You might get that baptism. And just go, i got to make sense of it, Brother Terry. I'll say this right here. Except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. If he called for me to die, many souls will be saved. We'll get off that. Because that's a whole other level baptism right there. Like I said, I don't honestly know if I'm ready for that one. But all these others, he is so good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to go baptize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I suppose everybody can still hear, hear me. But uh, So today we're going to be baptizing two of my granddaughters, Annalise and Lydia Kuti. So it's a special day for me. A few weeks back, you can come on, baby, and just turn around and sit down there. You got it. Yeah, there you go. For weeks they had been asking Shonda, sister and I'm sure Jerry that about baptism if they could be baptized they saw other people getting baptized and 
they explain to them, so maybe you get baptized when you've made Jesus Lord of your life and you're serious about serving Him. So they didn't, they didn't take it lightly and they didn't say immediately yes. And weeks went by, huh, Shonda, is that correct? Weeks went by and they continued to talk about it and tell them how they believed in Jesus and He was Lord of their life. So Annalise, today you've asked Jesus into your heart and be your Savior. And today you're saying, Jesus, take my life and make something wonderful of it. I surrender my will to your will. And the Bible says he has a wonderful plan for you. That's good, isn't it? Amen. You ready? When we do baptize... And I'm going to say this, y'all just heard my teaching, but I believe we're a church that baptizes in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, Father, today we baptize Annalise in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the authority of Jesus Christ. We raise her to newness of life. of a public speaker. Do you want to say anything? No. You just love Jesus? Yeah. From this day forward, we believe he's going to take your life and move it forward in the direction he wants you to go. Mom and dad raising you up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord says parents can raise you in the way they should go, that you should go. When you're old, you won't depart from it. We thank God that you're starting to follow him at this age now. And it will just alleviate so much pain and bad decisions if you follow Jesus all the days of your life. All right. So, Father, we baptize Lydia in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in the authority of Jesus Christ. We raise her to newness of life. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this church and these people. We bless you, Lord God. We bless everybody and tell them to have a wonderful day in Jesus' name. Amen.